Welcome to this episode of Grassroots Advocacy. Uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, I hope that you've had an opportunity to review or preview some of the previous editions. Over the last uh, couple of episodes, we've been talking about speaking up for your for speaking up for your elders and speaking up for your peers. In today's episode, we're going to talk about standing up for your residents. And there are two reasons that we're, we're covering this topic today. The first is there's been a fair amount of news coverage about abuse, neglect, and exploitation, um, which is very disheartening. The other reason that we're covering this is because I had the opportunity to have a social media engagement with a young nursing assistant in North Carolina. And she w wanted some advice. And so this episode in part is about is offering advice not only to her, but to all nursing assistants who are having a similar or who have had a similar experience. So let's take a look at, at her experience. A CNA from North Carolina writes, I have a resident that I believe is being abused by a family member. I mentioned this to my DON, but she does not seem to care. What should I do? That's a really great question. And this episode is really intended to help you um, think about how to, how to answer that question, not only for this young lady, but for anybody else who might have that similar experience. So the first thing I'd like to ask folks to think about, um, should they encounter something like this, is... Be careful not to assume too much. So, for example, the young lady said that her um, D.O.N. didn't seem to care. Well, it's possible that that's true. It's also equally as possible that the D.O.N. is involved in trying to address that issue and just doesn't want to share that information. Or it could be that she knows there's an ongoing investigation and she's just not ready to talk about it yet. Or he, because it could be a guy. Um, so the first thing I'd like to ask you to do is not to make too many broad-based assumptions. The second thing I'd like to ask you to do or encourage you to do is take time to get to know your care settings, policies, and procedures, and then follow them. What does your organization's policy and procedure say about reporting abuse, neglect, and exploitation. It's quite possible that in that policy and procedure, it may address the, the, the line of reporting. So that might start with um, you as a nursing assistant reporting to your unit supervisor or a shift supervisor then reporting to your, to your director of nursing services or director of clinical services um, or director of nursing services, whatever title your senior nurse leader holds. And then it might say, then if you haven't had any results there, to go to your executive director, your social service designee. Uh, the point is, take the time to, to understand your organization's policy and procedure because it should outline the reporting chain, if you will. The next item that I'd like to encourage you to know and to understand and to, to do is the, uh, the Elder Justice Act of March 23rd, 2010. The Elder Justice Act was signed into law to protect um, elders against abuse, neglect, and exploitation. Um, there are two elements of the Elder Abuse Act, or pardon me, Elder Justice Act, I misspoke, um, that I think are really interesting. One is that the, the act states that caregivers, um, regardless of what their title is within an organization, are mandatory reporters. In other words, if you see or suspect or believe that abuse, neglect, or exploitation are occurring, it is your responsibility as a professional to report that using the established policies and procedures and regulatory guidance. 
The next element that I think is rather interesting about the Elder Abuse Just, uh, Justice Act is that it provides for a, a protection against retaliation. And so in the instance that this young lady is sharing where she suspects that the abuser is a family member, if she reported, the Elder Justice Act would protect her from being retaliated against by the family members. So the, after you've gotten a good solid understanding of uh, the Elder Justice Act, the next thing that I'd like to ask you to do is to really take the time to get to know the state and federal regulations that relate to abuse, neglect, and exploitation. Understanding those regulations will allow you to better deal with the situation that you're confronted with and do it in a way that meets the needs of the people being cared for and complies with those regulations. So when we think about abuse, we're thinking about harm or potential for harm that's real, that's physical, that's there. Uh, and it doesn't have to be physical harm. It could be mental harm. For example, if you were speaking in a disrespectful way to somebody or a belittling, belittling way or demeaning way, if you were uh, holding their rights or, or uh, withholding their rights or something of that nature, that would be constitute abuse. Then we think about neglect. That's when you're doing something. It's not necessarily intentional or you're not doing something and it's not intentional. Um, but it is something that is necessary or appropriate. For example, let's say that the care plan, residence care plan, says that you're going to reposition every two hours. And for whatever reason, you miss a couple of times of repositioning. That could be um, defined as neglect because we didn't do something we're supposed to do. And then when we talk about exploitation, that's really about getting ahead at the expense of the women and men that we care for on a daily basis. And so you could think of it this way. You might uh, take a picture of a person, not you, pardon me, a, a nursing assistant might take a picture of someone that they're caring for and then post it on social media with a tagline that says, um, sucks to get old. That could constitute exploitation. The, the final thing that I'd like to ask you to think about is this. Each state has its own system for reporting abuse, neglect, and exploitation. And so it's up to you if you feel like you need to go outside of your organization to get the reporting completed. It's up to you to be familiar with where to report that and how to report that. For example, with regard to the young lady from North Carolina, I jumped on my computer and I did a Google search. And I typed in abuse reporting for North Carolina. And then I realized I had to narrow my search a little bit. So then I went in there and I said elder abuse reporting for North Carolina. And then I found the website that explained the process for reporting suspected abuse, neglect, or exploitation. And so then I shared that information with that young lady so she could follow up if she chose to do so. These are ways that you, as an advocate for the women and men that you care for, can, can serve as their voice so you can stand up for them. As we wrap up today's segment, I would like you to consider this quotation by President Theodore Roosevelt. In any moment of decision, the best thing you can do is the right thing. The next best thing you can do is the wrong thing. And the worst thing you can do is nothing at all. Theodore Roosevelt. I look forward to having the opportunity to be with you guys for the next episode of Grassroots Advocacy. Until then, be well.